Hallelujah. Christ is risen. As we have been reading through the scriptures in morning and evening prayer, we took a little bit of a break for a few days to celebrate the end of Holy Week and Easter. But now we're going right back into the normal flow of things. We find ourselves starting off in the middle of Mark. We've just passed a hinge moment. Jesus asks them, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, you are the Christ. He recognizes who Jesus really is. But now there's a turning point. Before this time, everything Jesus has done has been high invitation. It's been winsome. He's been drawing people to himself. But now he's moving towards the cross. And so now there's high challenge from this point on. He says, okay, this is where I'm going. I'm going to the cross. If you follow me, it requires you renounce life as normal. It requires you take up the call to serve that I've taken up. It requires you prepare for suffering. Are you ready for that? We just watch that challenge throughout the rest of this book. We're also starting Hebrews this week. And in Hebrews, we have a book here written by somebody who knows the Old Testament so very well. He's writing to people probably from Jewish background who are being tempted to set aside their faith and return to what's familiar. And he is using this word better again and again and again. What Jesus offers is better than what we used to have. Jesus has a greater priesthood. He is greater than Moses. He is greater than Joshua. He offers better sacrifices in a better tabernacle. He gives us a better covenant. It's better in every way. It's hard to understand Hebrews without understanding the Torah in in its great detail. But the good news is, for weeks now, we've been reading those very laws that are being referenced here. The chapters that we read from the Torah are selected, particularly because these chapters are needed to understand what is coming next. In fact, this week... We're reading from Numbers, the story of the rebellion in the wilderness. God has taken the people out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. He's protected them and provided for them in so many ways. And now his call is to go into the land of promise. But they see the people who live there and they're scared to go forward. In their fear, their inability to trust God, they say, no, actually, let's just take a group of people and go back to Egypt where we came from, back to slavery. God in his anger decides that these people who would not trust him would not enter into the promised land, into the land of rest. Instead, they would continue to wander in the wilderness for 40 years until they died and their children who grew up in the wilderness, grew up learning to trust God, then could enter into the land of promise. Hebrews picks this up actually this week and we hear about this, this as they failed to enter into God's rest because they would not obey God's word. When you hear God's word, don't harden your heart. You enter into, you receive the good things God has because you obey him, you trust him. Speaking of hearing and obeying God's word, I do want to give a note of caution as we go into Job. Usually we say the word of the Lord at an end of a chapter of scripture and it's an invitation to hear, to take it to heart. But Job is a debate, and each chapter comes from a different voice. And so what one person will say something, but then in the next chapter, somebody else will come up and question what is said and point out the the flaws in the argument. You have Job speaking in his bitterness, yet with integrity of heart. You have his friends speaking the conventional wisdom of their day. And you'll have God, who gets to have his own say at the end of it. So as we hear a chapter, we don't have to just believe everything that was written in that chapter, we're invited to listen and to consider and to ask, is this actually true? Happy reading.